first, I'll create a map of the prominent lines and shapes in and around the eye. And this will serve as a guide as we move in with color. Let's move into the nose. Layer by layer, we'll continue going darker there. And now I'm thinking about creating smoother transitions from dark shapes into mid-tone areas such as here. And what I'm doing is touching in tiny dots of color with the tip of the brush. And I want to see a smoother transition from the darker part of the nostril into this area. And by touching in little bits of color, you can really control where you go darker. Moving into the head, neck, and ears, I'll create the groundwork, the colors that can be found underneath the darker textures and fur. If you feel like your color is too dark, thin it out with some water. I need to thin these edges. I just rinsed the brush and wiped it on the towel. And I'm pulling and thinning the edges. And you see I'm using my smaller brush to do that. And it's okay if you go further than what you see in the photo. Okay, so there we've got rid of the hard edges. We could move into the ears and map the pale grays. And now for the textures and the fur. And what I'll do is look for areas that could go darker by applying texture or hairs. I'm using the photo as a guide in creating the contour of the hairs. So I see that they're curving inward and they're becoming shorter here. Here, I'm creating some very short hairs. And they seem to point to this center area right here. I'll move to the ears, creating a pale map of these white hairs. And now that we've got those hair markings in place, I can use them as a guide as I lay in these darker values. So look for areas in the ear that are darker and with thin applications of gray, begin to create those or reinforce those dark shapes. 
And now let's go in and apply those pale textures. And now for that glaze of the pinkish mix. Finally, you could lay in some longer whiskers. Now, if something goes in too dark, you can lift the color out. And there it is. Thanks for watching.